The Inquisitions. The word inquisition refers to harsh or unfair investigations or a series of questions. The Roman Catholic Inquisitions consisted of organizations within the Catholic Church acting on behalf of the Catholic Church, finding, interrogating, and punishing people who disagreed with Roman Catholic theology. We will be discussing two of the main stages or periods of Roman Catholic Inquisition. The first to cover is known as the Medieval Inquisition, which was officially launched in the 13th century, and it involved the persecution of groups known as the Cathars, Waldensians, and others as well. The second stage or period is known as the Spanish Inquisition, and it began in the beginning of the 15th century. It was launched against Protestants, Jews, Muslims, and others. Medieval Inquisition The lead-up to the 13th century Inquisition involves the massacre of a group of dissident believers known as the Cathars or Albigenses, who rose up in France in the 11th century. Although there is room for debate as to if the Cathars held to truly heretical teachings, it is a fact that they believed the Roman Catholic Church's sacramental system was evil and that the Catholic Church was not teaching God's message, which was expressed in the Holy Bible. These people had a very high view of scripture. They believed that when secular authorities punished heretics, that this was sin. The name Cather means pure. They sought to live lives of holiness. A 13th century Dominican named Renarius estimated that by his day, there were over 4 million Cathars in over 1,000 cities. Rome perceived this movement as a serious threat which was to be eliminated. In 1179, the Third Lateran Council condemned and anathematized this group, and in 1208, Pope Innocent III decided to launch a vicious crusade against them. This crusade lasted from 1209 to 1229. In a general letter to the faithful, Pope Innocent III angrily wrote, quote, O most mighty soldiers of Christ, most brave warriors, ye oppose the agents of Antichrist, and ye fight against the servants of the old serpent. Fight for God. This war on the Cathars, though ultimately unsuccessful in and of itself in getting rid of all of them, was nevertheless extremely bloody and ruthless. In one incident, the so-called Battle of Bezige resulted in the slaughter of 10,000 to 20,000 believers. Commenting on this incident, Philip Schaff notes, Neither age nor sex was spared. Church walls interposed no protection, and 7,000 were put to death in St. Magdalene's church alone. Pope Innocent III offered his crusade soldiers spiritual reward for the murder of these believers, that is, indulgences for the remission of temporal punishments for sin. This crusade involved many massacres as well as the burning of Cathars who were captured. The clerics within the Cathar movement were ruthlessly eliminated without the benefit of a hearing. In regards to the stronghold of Minerve, 140 Cathar clerics were burnt alive, and the prisoners had their ears, noses, and lips cut off. Commenting on the severity of this crusade, historian Williston Walker notes that Innocent III's efforts, quote, led to 20 years of destructive warfare, in which the power of the southern nobility was shattered and cities and provinces devastated. Another group which was to be eliminated was known as the Waldensians. This movement began in 1177 in Italy and was based on the teachings of Peter Waldo, AD 1140 to 1218. The Waldensian believers affirmed that the Bible was the ultimate authority and that whatever was not found in Holy Scripture was not to be believed by Christians. These believers practiced memorizing the Bible, and its preachers went out two by two preaching. They, among other things, rejected masses and prayers for the dead as unscriptural and denied Rome's doctrine of purgatory. They also refused to venerate saints. Because of these teachings, the Roman Catholic Church enacted what is known as the Episcopal Inquisition, whereby local Catholic bishops would turn unrepentant Bible believers like the Waldensians and others who refused Rome's teachings over to civil authorities for punishment. This Episcopal Inquisition was ordered by Pope Lucius III, who reigned from AD 1181 to 1185. On November 4, 1184, he, in unison with the Council of Verona, issued the bull Ad Abolendum, that is, on abolition, where he condemned and excommunicated the Waldensians and other sects. The bull says, quote, to abolish the malignity of diverse heresies which are lately sprung up in most parts of the world, it is but fitting that the power committed to the church should be awakened, that by the concurring assistance of the imperial strength, both the insolence and malpertness of the heretics in their false designs may be crushed. 
we likewise declare all entertainers and defenders of the said heretics be liable to the same sentence, unless by adjuring his heresy and making satisfaction, he immediately returns to the orthodox faith. We decree him to be left to the sentence of the secular judge, to receive condign, that is deserved, punishment, according to the quality of the offense. In the same bull, Pope Lucius III also decreed that the goods and money of the punished heretics be confiscated for the use of the Roman Church. This led to what is known as the first formal inquisition in the medieval era. In 1229, the Council of Toulouse issued a decree sanctioning burning at the stake for the punishment of heresy. Likewise, the German Mirror of Saxon Laws were compiled in 1235 and ordered the execution of heretics and unbelievers by burning at the stake. With Cathars still around due to the failure of Innocent III's crusade against them, as well as Waldensians and other dissidents walking the lands, Pope Gregory IX, who reigned from AD 1227 to 1247, cemented the Inquisition. He took interrogation, trial, and the punishment of heretics out of the hands of the bishops and placed them into the hands of the monastic orders such as the Franciscans and Dominicans. Everything was now in order for possibly the worst atrocity in all of history to be carried out. By 1244, the Cathars were basically wiped out. Their last refuge was Monsteger, France. However, they were overcome by the Inquisition and the 200 remaining Cathar clerics were there burnt alive. As historian Williston Walker remarks, by means of Inquisition, the Cathars were utterly rooted out by the middle of the 14th century. As time progressed, the Inquisition became crueler and crueler. The final step in configuring the procedure of the Inquisition was made by Pope Innocent IV, when he, in the bull Ad Extrapanda of 1252, authorized the use of brutal torture as a means of extracting a confession from alleged heretics and Bible believers. This practice was also confirmed by later popes such as Alexander IV in 1259 and Pope Clement IV in 1265. Again, during this period, the inquisitors responsible for hearings, confiscation of property, overseeing torture, and burning at the stake were mainly priests within the monastic Dominican and Franciscan orders. In regards to citizens turning in other citizens for interrogation, the Council of Toulouse in its 18th canon made it clear that mere suspicion or public rumor of heresy was sufficient for formal inquisition proceedings to be leveled. This resulted in people falsely being accused of heresy by Catholic citizens they had rivalries with. Others turned in members of their own community in order to appear loyal to Rome and avoid inquisition themselves. There were even fixed rewards given to spies who specialized in ratting out suspected heretics and Bible believers. In regards to the mode and procedure of inquisition here, a suspected heretic would first be accused, then if he denied being a heretic or a Bible believer, a trial was held. He was first threatened with death, usually with the choice of one, confessing and being forgiven by Rome, or two, being burnt at the stake. If the person rejected those two choices, then they were imprisoned with little to no food. If the person still didn't confess and recant or choose death, then he would be visited and pressed by others who had previously been tried by the inquisitors in order to make a decision. Then if that didn't work, the person was brutally tortured in various ways in order to extract confession. This usually resulted in a confession and recantation, but nevertheless others such as Bible believers would bravely endure the torture and not give up their faith in the word of God and in Christ. Schaff notes that Rome was not just satisfied with torture and burning alive of Bible believers, heretics and unbelievers, but quote, the Inquisition made war upon the dead and exhumed the bodies of those found to have died in heresy and burned them. Although figures can be multiplied many times, Schaff notes that during the administration of an inquisitor from Toulouse named Bernard Guy, who tortured and murdered from AD 1306 to 1323, 42 persons were tortured and burnt to death, 69 bodies were exhumed and burnt, and 300 were imprisoned. In 1233, Pope Gregory IX appointed a French Dominican named Robert of Petit to be Inquisitor General. He had hundreds of victims. In a period of just three months, he had 50 people, both male and female, burnt to death. He burnt 20 to death in Cambrai and 10 in Dowie. In 1239, at Mount Amy, he had 27 burnt to death or, as another account reports, 180. Michael C. Thompson mentions one of the most sadistic and maniacal inquisitors of the 13th century, 
namely Conrad of Marburg. He investigated heresy in Languedoc and Rhineland. Many placed into his hands were given the choice of speedy confession or death by burning. The Archbishop of Mayence wrote to Pope Gregory IX about this cruel method and the Pope's response was to identify Conrad as a champion of the Christian faith and to encourage him to continue punishing heretics as well as alleged witches. Conrad was known for stripping naked those he tortured in order to first humiliate them. Now, the previously mentioned Waldensian Bible believers, though hunted vigorously and massacred by Rome during the Inquisition, nevertheless miraculously survived it unlike the Cathars. Schaff notes that in 1308, Dominican and Franciscan inquisitors hunted and murdered the Waldensians in Bohemia and Poland. However, after facing the Inquisition and enduring the horrors it produced, the Waldensians eventually escaped into the mountain regions of northern Italy in order to avoid total annihilation. They survived over the centuries and many of them eventually joined the Protestant Reformation movement in the 16th century. It's interesting to note that many of Rome's quote-unquote saints came out of these Dominican and Franciscan orders which were involved with the Inquisition. For example, Saint Thomas Aquinas and Saint Albert the Great were Dominicans, and Saint Bonaventure was a Franciscan. It's sickening how Rome would canonize and exalt men who were involved in orders which oversaw the torture and death of massive amounts of Bible believers and others. The medieval inquisition did not stop there. In AD 1484, Pope Innocent VIII produced the bull Sumus Desiderantis Affectibus, wherein he authorized inquisitors to find, try, and murder alleged witches. In this so-called great witch hunt, intellectual arguments meant to persuade the person of their error were not utilized by inquisitors. Instead, the goal was to extract a confession by torture and then murder those rumored to be alleged witches. It was believed by the Catholics that a witch could not cry from pain. And since those tortured cried, the papal inquisitors claimed the devils must have made them cry as a trick to convince everyone they were not a witch. The inquisitors would often shave the bodies of alleged witches, including the private parts, since Catholic superstition at that time said that witches would one, hide objects of witchcraft in their hair or private parts, and two, that witches had a birthmark or scar which would function as a teat to feed milk or blood to imps or the devil himself. Inquisitors would therefore stab alleged witches on their scars or birthmarks with needles since they claimed a witch would not bleed if their witch's teat was pierced. However, when the people did bleed, the torturers claimed Satan allowed the bleeding to make it appear the person was not a witch. They then resorted to torture such as putting hot boiling fat in the person's eyes, underarms, and thighs, which many times led to infection or death. In Germany, alleged witches who were tortured into confession then had hot irons put on their breasts and arms, their right hand cut off, their body burnt at the stake, and their ashes thrown into the river. Most of these accused witches were simply social outcasts the community did not like, or women who were poor, unmarried, elderly, pale, or wrinkly. Tens of thousands of alleged witches were murdered in the Inquisition. The Spanish Inquisition Just when one thinks it could not possibly get any worse, they encounter the second phase of Inquisition known as the Spanish Inquisition. The Council of Tortosa in 1429 showed that certain Jews were conversos, that is, those who outwardly confessed Catholicism but were not getting their children baptized and were still practicing Jewish feasts and attending the synagogue. The Council of Basel also confirmed this was taking place. In 1478, Queen Isabella of modern-day Spain and her husband Ferdinand appealed to Pope Sixtus IV, who reigned from AD 1471 to 1484, to establish Inquisition. Pope Sixtus IV agreed and issued the bull Exigit Sinceras Devotionis Affectus, which promulgated the investigation as to whether or not converted Jews and others were secretly continuing to practice their original religion. Historian Williston Walker remarks, The Spanish Inquisition especially concerned itself with rooting out those Jewish and Muslim converts who had supposedly lapsed from the faith and with maintaining purity of blood in all offices of state and church. It was also to deal harshly with Spanish Protestants and all those suspected of Lutheranism. The way this inquisition was set up was that three Catholic priests would be appointed to a tribunal 
being selected by Queen Isabella and Ferdinand. In 1480, two Catholic Dominicans were given this role, namely Juan de San Martin and Miguel de Murillo. Their advisor was Juan de Medina. As the plan progressed, there were too many prisoners in the common containing area, and so they had to be moved to gloomy dungeons for Inquisition. On February 6, 1481, six months after this tribunal was established, six conversos accused of heresy were publicly burnt to death after a Catholic named Friar Alfonso de Ojeda first gave a grisly sermon to the masses. The papacy then appointed seven more inquisitors. In 1482, more inquisition tribunals were set up in Cordoba, and in 1483, even more were set up in Jean and Quaidud Real. Schaff notes, quote, according to a contemporary, by November 4th, 1491, 298 persons had been committed to the flames. In regards to the tribunal in Quaidud Real, Schaff relays that within two years, it had 52 heretics burnt, and in Avila, from 1490 to 1500, 75 were burnt alive and 26 dead bodies were exhumed and burnt. In the 1480s, many conversos fled to Portugal to escape Inquisition. However, in 1536, the Inquisition found its way even there. In his work, The Grand Inquisitor's Manual, Jonathan Kirsch relays that, quote, Protestants joined the Jewish and Muslim conversos as principal targets of the Spanish Inquisition. In 1533, a priest who was charged with the seduction of a nun sought to appease the inquisitors by offering them the names of 70 men and women whom he denounced as Lutheran heretics. The first Protestant burned for heresy by the Spanish Inquisition went to the stake in 1540, and 26 of the 30 accused heretics at the auto at Toledo in 1559 were Protestants. The procedures of Inquisition at this time were as follows, as developed by the Inquisitor's General, Thomas D. Torquemenda. First, there was accusation. Any civilian could level an accusation of heresy or immorality against another, and it would result in a tribunal. Even if no citizen accused anyone, Inquisitors could freely accuse citizens. Abuses crept in since the wealthy were often targeted by Inquisitors since their wealth would be confiscated and go towards funding Inquisition. Second, there was detention. Once accused, the person was detained and their property was seized temporarily, depending on the outcome of the tribunal. Detention often lasted months. Families of the detained were not informed, which often resulted in women and children of the family not being able to survive without the man of the house around. Thirdly, after detention came interrogation. The goal was to gain a confession and pass a sentence. There was no intention of convincing the accused of the error of their alleged heresy or immorality. There were many methods of torture used to gain a confession, including the following. There was the garucha, or strapado, which was a suspension system which had ropes, weights, and pulleys. The victim's arms were tied behind their back. They were hoisted in the air, and then they were dropped. They were stopped in midair right before hitting the ground, so that the weights tied to their ankles caused great pain and dislocation. There was also the taka, which was basically waterboarding where a cloth was put over the victim's mouth and water poured in, resulting in the victim feeling like they were drowning. Also utilized was the potro, or rack. The victim was placed on this device and their arms and legs were severely stretched, causing excruciating tearing of the muscles and dislocation. In 1591, Pablo Garcia, the secretary of the Suprema in Madrid, wrote instructions on how this torture was to be carried out. He stated, quote, If the prisoner should die or be injured or suffer heavy bleeding or have a limb mutilated during the torture, this will be their fault and responsibility and not ours, because they have refused to tell the truth. Fourthly, after interrogation through torture came hearings and trial. Fifthly, you had sentencing. Acquittals were very rare in Spanish Inquisition. When found guilty, the victim was handed over to the secular authorities for burning at the stake. Burnings were usually like festivities where Catholics in the community would watch and be entertained. The ritual began with a mass and then a public procession of the victim. Instances of burning heretics during the Spanish Inquisition lasted into the late 18th century. In his 2007 work, Inquisition, the Reign of Fear, Toby Green remarks on the statistics of the Spanish Inquisition, quote, 
The Inquisition was at its most severe in Spain during the first 50 years after its formation in 1478, when it is estimated that 50,000 people were tried, a significant proportion as religados burnt at the stake. In some years, such as 1492, 2,000 people may have been relaxed in person and another 2,000 burnt in effigy. Approximately 700 people were put to death in Seville alone between 1481 and 1488, and another 50 in Quadud Real between 1483 and 1484. In the Crown of Aragon, meanwhile, roughly 1,000 people were relaxed between 1485 and 1530. Between 1540 and 1700, 84,000 people were tried. In the reign of Philip V, there was a rekindling of violence after the War of the Spanish Succession finished in 1714. With 1,463 trials, with 111 executions, in Portugal there were approximately 45,000 trials between 1536 and 1767, including 13,667 in Goa, with at least 1,543 people being relaxed. 